Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon angelfish tank and today we are going to do a little experiment. I'm not actually going to experiment on this tank uh, per se today, but we are going to do an experiment that is going to find out whether or not it would be safe to try it on this tank or not. So first I'm going to have to do a little bit of Dan Splaining to get you caught up to speed on what I'm even talking about here. So this is my water sprite, and you notice how it looks very almost pine needle like. For a very long time, I had it growing like this in my uh, garami tank, except that every frond here was twisted and gnarled, and it looked really strange. So I always chalked it up to a nutrient deficiency and then possibly growing up against the glass. It was causing it to twist and curl and that sort of thing. But I was never really sure what exactly was going on. And for the longest time, like I said, I just kind of chalked it up to a nutrient deficiency. And we will get to that. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out what my very, very simple uh, nutrient deficiency is. But we'll get to that in a minute. So eventually I just kind of gave up figuring whatever. I kind of like the way it looks. It's still growing, so who cares? And I never put a whole lot of thought into it. And eventually I had a viewer tell me when I mentioned it in, in a video, uh, they said that it was because once the water sprite hits the air, it grows differently than it does when it's down in the water. And you can see even on this plant, the stuff that's in the water still looks like water sprite. It's not until it gets out into the air that it does this. So I went around and I checked a few of my other plants and sure enough every single one that grew up and out of the water looked like this. So problem solved, you know, that, that explained it to me. But as time has gone on I've thought more and more about it and I still am beginning to think that it is a nutrient deficiency and the reason I think that, well the reason I really think it this morning is we're going to go have a look at it in a minute. But I've come to realize recently that my house plants have been suffering from CalMag deficiency, calcium and magnesium. And I don't know why that never occurred to me before. I've got super duper soft water. I have no calcium and no magnesium at all in my water. And it goes through my water treatment system, which I will go over one of these days. And I actually add calcium and magnesium to it, but that's only to stabilize the pH. I then take it back out uh, and replace that with sodium ions. So I have fairly stable pH, and it's not um, acidic. I keep my pH about 7.3 coming out of my tab, but it has no calcium, no magnesium, and very, very little carbonate hardness even. I don't have very much buffering capacity in my water. Um, so I've been watering my house plants with some different uh, plant food and with a CalMag supplement, and it has made a huge difference in my house plants. So about, I don't know, a week ago I was down here and I was watering some of the plants that are over here. The ones that are not actually attached to the tank actually need regular watering. And I was watering them with my, you know, regular, it was their time for a feeding. So they got my um, Jack's all-purpose fertilizer and my CalMag solution was mixed in with it when I watered them. And as I was walking past my grow out tank in my bathroom down here, I had the watering can in my hand and I noticed that the tank was getting a little low and I needed to top it off. And so I just used the watering can to top it off and I put maybe, I don't know, a quart of this nutrient solution in there. And again, this wasn't like I put a scoop of the, the fertilizer powder or anything like that. I really just put a little bit of water into a 10 gallon tank. So let me put you on pause here for a second and we'll go over and we will have a look at what my grow out tank water sprite now looks like. So that has been growing like that for I don't know, I've left it alone for uh, maybe the last 10 days or so because I'm really curious to see what that water sprite is going to do. It looks fantastic. Uh, I realize I've got uh, an explosion of the duckweed in here. Um, if you watch my videos regularly, you'll realize I'm anything but a neat freak. This just sits in here and does its thing. I never bother it. I never touch the light. 
It does not have a particularly good high quality light on it. It's just got an LED spotlight shining down. That's not one of those really good ones I always talk about and go on and on about. That's just some sort of generic brand. It's a 5000K and it's probably got about the same quality of light that a fluorescent uh, tube would have. It's just probably a little more intense than that because it is a 20 degree angle beam shining straight down on that tank. But it's not really a lot of light. If you put a light meter down there, you'd find out that that would be a very low light setting, and yet that is doing fantastic. So the rate of growth might have something to do with it. Once it hits the air, it grows a lot faster, so maybe a calcium and magnesium deficiency would be a lot more apparent once it grew out above the water line. And of course, uh, having it under my tanks, where my tanks are very, very well lit compared to this, that extra light causes extra growth. And again, it might need extra nutrients, but that is just from, you know, again, is that what did it? I don't know, but it sure seems to make a difference. So hang on a minute. We'll go back over and look at the tank again. So the question would now be, what would happen if I put not necessarily some of the plant food because there's, you know, plant food that's specifically designed to go in aquariums and I can get that easily enough and I'm sure it would have all the micronutrients I need and everything else. My main concern with putting my regular um, fertilizer in here would be that it's got a lot of nitrates in it, and I don't need any extra nitrates in my aquarium. Um, so actually, let's go over and have a look at my uh, fertilizer and my calcium and magnesium solution, and we'll talk about what my actual experiment is going to be. All right, so this is the fertilizer I use. I really like this stuff. I will put a link down below to it. Not only um, does it give you your NPK of 2020, which is pretty uh, potent stuff, it also has all your micronutrients and everything in it. Most all-purpose fertilizers will only have either like a 15, 15, 15, or 10, 10, 10. Um, they only have your macronutrients. This has all your micronutrients and everything so it's really really good fertilizer but again I don't know if I need that necessarily this is what I'm really going to be experimenting with and questioning it's got a very little bit of nitrogen in it but it's just calcium and magnesium so what I want to do is I want to take some water and I want to get a baseline of pH total dissolved solids and water hardness because remember water hardness is the amount of calcium and magnesium you have in it. So adding this to your water is hardening up the water. How much will I need to harden up the water where it becomes noticeable? Uh, I use this very sparingly, just about uh, maybe five mil per gallon of water is enough to keep my plants nice and healthy. Would that be enough to actually change my water hardness? I really doubt it. That's a very little tiny bit of um, I know this isn't exactly precise at 5 mil, but that line right there is supposedly 5 mil, um, wherever the line is, you know these vials. Um, so that vial to that right there is 5 mil in a gallon of water. How much is that going to impact the hardness of that water? Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start by testing my water uh, right out of the tap. In fact, we'll probably use my RO water just so we can get the best baseline possible. We'll do hardness, we'll do pH, and we will do um, total dissolved solids, and we'll see what it looks like. We'll add enough of the CalMag to be effective, and then we'll run all those tests again and see what happens. And the reason I really want to do this is because I've got a tank upstairs with my um, German Blue Ram in it that has a temple plant that really is absolutely suffering from a cow mag deficiency, and I'd love to be able to put some of this in there. But of all my tanks, that's the one I've got to be most concerned about adding dissolved solids to, hardening up the water. Uh, that GBR in there really needs to be in soft water. So we're going to see how much this affects it, and if it doesn't affect it very much, the experiment we're going to do is we're going to put some of it in that tank we were just looking at. Most of the fish in there are pretty hardy. So we don't have too much to worry about, and they can all tolerate slightly harder uh, water. So uh, let's get on with the experiment, and we will see how that goes. And then depending on that, we'll do another video later about the tank. So sit tight, and I will be back in a little bit to let you know how all this worked out. Okay, interesting results. 
First of all, the pH did not change at all. You can see both the before and the after here. If there is any change in color, it's so slight that I'm not going to worry about it at all. The total dissolved solids went from 8 to 474. So that was a pretty significant jump in the total dissolved solids. But 474 is still not a lot of dissolved solids. That's not that big of a deal. So I don't think that's going to make any difference, especially to the fish in the 20-gallon angelfish tank. That may make a difference to the German Blue Ram, but we'll see about that uh, down the road away. My water hardness test. This is not the kind of test I can just show you the results of. The way you do it is you put a drop of the solution into the water and then you shake it up and it's supposed to turn orange and then you put another drop in and you shake it up and you put another drop in and you shake it up and you put another drop in and you shake it up and you count the number of drops and then suddenly it will turn green whatever number you're at when it turns green on that drop that is how many degrees hardness you have now since this is RO water with eight parts per million dissolved solids it has no hardness and so when you put your first drop in which is what that is one drop it doesn't turn orange it if, and you're supposed to look straight down through the top onto the white surface below and if you do that it looks a lot more yellowy than we're seeing here from this angle but it gets this weird sort of yellowy greenish but more yellow than anything and I've come to realize over the years that's just what you get when it's not registering anything you don't even have one degree hardness you get no orange color at all from that hardness test so this one I dropped one drop in and it didn't look quite the same color as that it looked a little closer to yellow than green and I thought okay maybe is that what they mean by orange and so I kept going and I dropped and I dropped and I dropped and I went all the way up to 20 drops and if you look straight down through that it looks kind of orange and you can kind of even see through the lid there it looks pretty orange but I've done this test before with water that actually had hardness in it, and that's not the orange they're talking about. That's just 20 drops of looking more and more yellow with every drop. So that, to me, still indicates that that's, for all intents and purposes, that's virtually no hardness added to that water whatsoever. The total dissolved solids was the only thing that really changed, and of course I was expecting that, but I was not really expecting 475 parts per million dissolved solids. Now this is a half gallon of water, and I put a full 5 mil of the CalMag solution in there. None of the fertilizer, that's just the CalMag solution I put in there, and I put a full 5 mil. I put that much in. Now that's normally what I would put in a gallon of water. So if I was to put that in a gallon, I'd have to put 20 of these in my fish tank in order to make it my normal dosage. But I didn't do anything like that in my little grow out tank in there, and it seems to have made a big difference. So I think this is probably safe to try, and we're going to go ahead and do a little experiment in that uh, angelfish tank. So let's have one last look at that, and that will give us sort of a baseline look at what we're starting with. All right, so we don't need to add any of the fertilizer, I don't think. I will look around and see if there's a good, I'm sure Flourish or somebody makes a good, um, you know, general fertilizer that's got all your micronutrients and everything in it. And in fact, the planted gravel I use or the planted substrate I use has all your micronutrients and everything in it already, but you've got to be rooted down into that in order to get access to that. It doesn't dissolve into the water. So in order to get any kind of calcium or magnesium to this, I'm going to have to add a little bit of that CalMag solution. So we're going to go ahead and try it and see if this doesn't start uh, looking any better. You can see it doesn't look good, even the edges where it's not only sort of, you know, pine needle-y looking, they're, they're kind of curling over and, you know, definitely not looking particularly good on this tank. So we're going to try a little bit of that CalMag and see what happens. So... Make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss over what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. Uh, it should be interesting to see how this tank plays out. And then don't forget, of course, it is my 20-gallon angelfish tank. So thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.